it all. Uh, Ian, let's uh, quickly start with the uh, with the big news uh, regarding Leicester City and Jamie Vardy. You said last night you might put a bid in. Any uh, any response from them? No, not yet. Um, but but who knows? <laughs> um, no, you know, obviously I was a bit of fun last night, but yeah, um, we'll wait to see. I think he'd do great in our system. Yeah, absolutely. So, mm. so probably unlikely before the Easter game on Saturday then, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, he's injured at the moment, isn't he? So, you know, we'd probably, probably want to take him through a vigorous medical. Of course, of course. <laughs> right, let's, uh, let's reflect on the real business. Uh, last night's win against King Glynn, uh, an excellent second half. Uh, brought all three points uh, back to our team. What pleased you the most about uh, last night's win? I think it's just the way that we we were able to adapt in the game. Um, you know, you can't always have it on the terms that you want, and we didn't have it on our terms in the first half. We we didn't play well at all, um, but we adapted and we found a way. And and you know, we've I think we've won four in a row in the league now, and and all four we've come from behind, um, which is showing real character and resilience. Um, Ideally, we don't want to keep going behind in games, so that's something we have to address. But at the same time, I think uh, to be 1-0 down away, difficult game Tuesday night, um, and turn it around and put in that second half performance is uh, is a really strong mentality from the group. Yeah, I think you, 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 well, you certainly knocked it right on the head there with the fact that it shows great character but for you to come from behind uh, as well, and especially in the manner in which you did. You had to tweak things at half-time uh, last night against, uh, against Kings Lynn. What... In terms of the way that you responded in the second half, just how, uh, tactically, how, how did that work in terms of getting the best from your players? Yeah, I mean, you have to look at... We, we have a way in which we want to play, but we, we, teams obviously try to stop us doing that, and that's uh, that's normal. So um, I thought Kings Lynn did it really well, and we were struggling a little bit. They pressed kind of with a front three, matched our back three, um, and we just struggled to, to find the, the passes and get through them so we switched to a back four I thought that would release the full backs a little bit more and give us a bit of space wide and obviously when we get more space wide players like Cal Roberts in, in those positions uh, when it opens up is ideal so we changed it around at half time we've, it's not the first time we've done it um, we've done that this a couple of times we did it away at Grimsby as well um, and I think it's it's really good because it shows that the players are, are flexible We're not we, we have a system but it's not always set if we need to adapt and change I think the players are embracing that and um, it's great kind of weapon to have is be able to 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 change systems change shape and personnel and and you know take back the initiative in the game yeah absolutely and it must be nice as well to actually turn up to a football ground and get a game of football because I know obviously later yeah. with Kingsley on Boxing Day and, and Dover as well after that it must have been great just to go there and knowing that you can actually, all the work that you put in in training, you can actually put that into fruition on a match day. Yeah, yeah. We've obviously had a couple of frustrating weeks with games cancelled. I mean, it's obviously we had the, the Chesterfield game was off with COVID and then we had the two games with the waterlogged pitch. So, a um, bit of frustration with with um, with that. But I think we, we got that out of our system. We were a little bit rusty when we started the game, but by the time we came into it, we were just happy to be out on the pitch and play a game. Yeah, it must be really encouraging for you as the manager to see that the uh, the recent postponements hasn't upset the uh, the momentum and the rhythm of the team. Yeah, I think that was important. We felt that you know we were obviously in a good place in terms of performance, and you then just want more games to come because you feel like you're in a good place and you want to keep playing. And then the delays and the changing in the training schedule um, can affect you a little bit. So it was good to see that it didn't really affect us over the course of the game, and that the the lads took on the challenge well. Yeah. Uh, Cal Roberts, a 15 minute hat trick for him last night, a superb individual performance to, to cap off what's been a, a really good season for him so far. Uh, looking, at, looking at the way he's playing um, with confidence as well with, with that hat trick, how encouraging is that going forward, seeing players like Cal Roberts just go, going off and, and really taking the game uh, by the scruff of the neck and, and getting those goals? Yeah, I think, I think the kind of season so far is like ebbed with different players stepping up and you know like we've had different players kind of excelling in different moments and maybe Cal's had a couple of quiet weeks and then you know he suddenly explodes like that um, in a game and we know we've got players with that individual quality so sometimes when you are you need that spark in a game guys like Cal, Ruben, you know Zach Brunt came on and, and did it also we have a lot of players that can can create something and and Cal certainly did that last night and, and long may that continue he um when he's in that kind of form and, and going at players, he's very, very difficult to play against. 
Yeah, and first uh, professional hat trick as well. A night that he'll certainly remember. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, especially I think it's a great hat trick as well. Certainly the third goal, uh, the tap in, but the the whole move starts with uh, Sam in goal and builds through the team. So as a coll- as a collective team goal, it's a really good goal as well. So I think to complete the hat trick with that kind of goals uh, is great. Yeah, and and I think it uh, it shows as well the confidence within the team. I mean, last night's win made it five in a row in a row. You're able to sort of try new things and try try those passages of play that lead to really nice looking goals like that. Do do, do you agree? Yeah, I think we, over the course of the season we've scored some really good team goals. You know, with patterns and passes cutting through, and and um, that's great. It's something we work really hard on. So yeah, when it comes off, and and certainly you know people would probably say you can't. It's a risk to build from the back in on that sort of a surface, and you've got to be more direct. But I think we just showed we stuck to our principles, and we, we scored really good goals off the back of it. Yeah, yeah, it certainly did. Uh, Eastley on uh, Saturday in the FA Trophy, uh, an opportunity to keep that momentum going as well. Yeah, it is. I mean, it gives us an opportunity to look at one or two other things as well. There's some players that are are chomping at the bit to get on the pitch and they're training really well and certainly we want to give one or two an opportunity because we need to keep that kind of hunger in the squad and and um, and keep that competition so it gives us a chance to rotate one or two which no doubt we will do um, but at the same time it's really important to put a good performance on because we want to maintain that momentum yeah how encouraging is it to, to have players chomping at the bit to try and try and get a game obviously with- the latest postponements and whatever games haven't exactly been coming thick and fast, but now that they are going to be, how how important is it for, for those players to get that game time? It's great, and, and and I have to give credit to the players that haven't played as many minutes because they train so well. You know, we've just been out with the players that didn't play last night, and they're they're absolutely bang at it in training and uh, working really really hard. And you know, the if the if the first eleven are playing well and the other ones are are not pushing them. Um, it inevitably breeds a bad environment. Whereas we've got a group of players that are so hungry, and that it, you know the reason why the eleven are playing well is because the ones that are on the periphery um, are, are training so hard and pushing them every day, and the mentality is great. So um, they, there's certainly players there that deserve a, an opportunity, and, and I think the trophy gives them that opportunity as well. Yeah, and you played easily in the uh, in the league back in November. What what can you take from that game? Um, away at Eastley that you can bring into this game on Saturday? Do you know what, it's a, it's a bit of a game that we've reflected on a couple of times since because um, it was it was the, the first, I think we'd had maybe six games without a loss and then we lost that game um, and for me it was a, a really disappointing performance um, when we looked at the numbers we it was one of the the poorest in terms of physical output, our intensity was really low, um, and it was the end of a long week as well, and and a difficult week. I think we had the cup replay, we had this Oliol game at home. We put a lot of energy into those, and then we got to Eastley and we played without that energy. But it was a good example to us that when we don't um, play with that right intensity, that right focus, doing the right things consistently, we can fall foul of um, uh, of of teams. And certainly, they're very well organised team. They're defensively, they were very solid on that day. And um, yeah, I think it was a, a great example to us that if we come off the the pedal just a little bit, this is what can happen. So we've used that as a reference actually since then. Um, and, and we know that if we come off it against Eastley, then then they give us a real problem. Yeah, I mean, as as uh, head coach, how do you Matt, how do you maintain those that intensity and that that high standards that you set already so far this season? Generally, the players do it. You know, I, we push them in training. That they, um, but they have a strong mindset here. They want to do well, and and they're a really good group to work with. So, um, I think that the, the the lads normally are dictating the the tempo. We push them, but they they're a good group, and they they're very they want to learn and get better. And I think that makes it easy for me. But in general, um, we try to to do it every day in training and create those good habits. And then hopefully, if you do that consistently, that that you know, goes across onto the games on a Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, going on to Saturday, it'll be the first match at Meadow Lane since the, the passing of Colin Slater. It's sure to be an emotional day, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, th- everybody associated with Knotts um, feels that, you know, a, a real legend around the place. And, and yeah, I think, you know, we, 
we certainly, you know, it was an emotional day yesterday when you heard the crowd chanting his name later on in the game and, and I'm sure the crowd will be doing that again at the weekend. Yeah, uh, what have you made of the tributes that are coming from him? Because there's been thousands of them, not just across Nottinghamshire, but, but all over the world. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and th- well deserved. You know, he's um, you know an institution around Meadow Lane, and, and the, you know I've I've read things about so many fans their their early memories of Notts are listening to him on the radio, and that resonates with so many supporters. And and uh, you know, growing up listening to that or being a part of that, you know, that that kind of a person that lives long in the memory. So um, yeah, you can see how valued he was around Meadow Lane. Yeah, and, and as well, but very finally, again, Mr. Barnett next Friday, the club are planning to do a, a tribute to him. Um, I'm guessing plans are underway for that one, but what would you think would be the perfect tribute to, to Colin? <laughs> I think the obvious thing is a great performance in three points um, and uh, and an exciting football game because uh, we want to put an exciting football game on because that's what commentators certainly want to commentate on, not a ball nil-nil draw. So um, the best tribute would be to go out and... Uh, and put on a, a great performance at Meadow Lane.